guys, welcome back to the podcast. This is Review Review, the series where we look at letterbox reviews and discuss our thoughts on them and the movie themselves. Today we're talking about the hit 1994 film, Pulp Fiction. I love Pulp Fiction. You do you do we do we love Pulp Fiction? Pulp Fiction best movie. Woohoo! Pulp Fiction best movie. Uh anyway, I'm Zach. I'm Liam. I'm Ethan. And I'm Ryan. I guess let's get into it, boys. Let's talk about this movie, guys. This movie is incredibly popular. It's like the movie. It is the movie. It is the movie. That's it fair. was made by the guy who the made guy. the movie, Tarantino. I personally have mixed feelings about Tarantino. All right. His I movies are great. All right. I love Django. Kill Bill was great. Like, uh, his movies are great, but as a guy, you know, like, even in his art, you can tell that this guy's a little silly, right? Like, like the way he just, like, has just been, like, saying the N-word in two of his films, and he, like, wrote himself into the movie and said the N-word, it's like, what? Why? Like, who is this guy? Why does he give himself the right to do this? No one thinks it's funny except for him. If that's what he's trying to, like, get out of it. Like, it feels like... Because it's just, like, imagine, like, a Stan Lee cameo in a Marvel movie, except he's saying a slur. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I mean, his whole idea that he talks about that I I don't agree with, but he says that it's, like, that if you use a word enough times, it takes the power away from it. But he's saying this as a white man. It's ridiculous. He's making a movie about slavery. And then then claims that. It's it's ridiculous. I think it is warranted to some extent in Django because I mean, uh, yeah. But why is he saying it? Well, I mean, yeah. That's the well. That's even that's the worst thing in Pulp Fiction. But is that it, it's just so unnecessary. I don't know the worst thing in Pulp Fiction. I think so. All right. <laughs> I think the rest of the movie's pretty equal on the worst part of Pulp Fiction, at least in my opinion. Oh, oh wait, or do we have a split room again? We might have a split room again. Go I, get him, Ryan. I don't love Pulp Fiction. Oh. I got to be honest with you. Real quick, before you before you start your whole thing. So you guys, Ethan and Zach, you guys like Pulp Fiction. No, not really. Oh, <laughs> so it's just Zach. So it's just right. me. <laughs> uh, anyways, yeah. I was going to say, because I do not like Pulp Fiction. Um, anyways, Ryan, get into it. Okay, like, it's not the worst movie ever made. Like, it's a very watchable movie, in my opinion. And, like, I just don't know. I think there's some parts that are just a little bit too slow for me and in my opinion the pacing is so god awful in that movie until like right at the like end uh probably like when bruce is about halfway through or butch sorry butch is halfway through his little bit like with the taxi cab after that's done i feel like then it picks up a little bit but that's that's like an hour and a half into the movie already and it's to me it's so boring and all the dialogue just feels so forced and so uncomfortable what, uh, like Zach said, was, we were talking earlier, and he said that, that he's really good at writing like a single line, which I agree with. His, his movies are very quotable, but I feel like stringing all of his lines together is a challenge for Tarantino. At least that's, that's my opinion. Get him, Zach. Am I, am I going to have to defend all yes. like this movie from, from all angles? angles? <laughs> from yes. all angles? Um, I don't know if I can, because <laughs> the last time I watched this was a couple, like, six months ago but i don't know uh it was also my first time watching it. i watched um, it i watched it like two days ago to right get um, a refresher at least from what i remember i i remember not being bored at all even though a good chunk of the segments are just people talking i feel like i was still i don't know i was still invested yeah. in the story in the conversations so i really like his writing style in these movies i don't know If that's just me. No, I agree. I think it works probably the best in this movie of his movies. Just because I think that Tarantino is like, he's really a a pop artist. Like he, his whole thing is like taking things from uh, pop culture and putting them into like the context of like a gritty crime movie. And that works really well here because it's like a, like, a bunch of characters who are basically just like hipsters in the, they're kind of like fifties characters, but in the context of the, of nineties LA, 
And so I think their deliveries are, they're corny, but like, that's the, like, especially like Uma Thurman, that's the whole idea is it's like, they're kind of doing like Grease characters or like old fashioned kind of dialogue, which I think is fine. It's just, it, it's really kind of self-indulgent in parts where it'll just keep going. And I, I don't think it gets boring. I just think it's kind of unnecessary when the runtime ends up at like two and a half hours, I think. I think it's 2.34. Yeah. Something like that. Like, I used to do this thing where it's like when I uh, when I joined this class and I, you know, I, like, started, you know, making my own movies. Guys, I'm the best, I'm the best movie guy. Um, what class? What? What class did you join? The Career Technology Center, TV Multimedia. Do you want to hear a piece about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, real quick, we're going to have a little break here to thank our sponsor for this episode. Thank um, you. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, sponsor. You're a real one. This episode of CTC 180 is brought to you by the TV Multimedia Program at the Frederick County Career and Technology Center. The Career and Technology Center provides intensive career-specific training to both college-bound and employment-oriented students. The TV Multimedia Program allows high school students to explore the television and multimedia industry. Students have the opportunity to gain industry certifications and college credits. If you're interested in learning more about the TV Multimedia Program or Career Technology Center, visit our website or stop by and see us on October 26th for the annual CTC Open House. Anyways, uh, <laughs> so I, uh, ever since I joined this class, I've since I've been making movies, I just kind of like... I started seeing movies in a new light, and I still do, but I think it was more negative towards the end of it. Like, like whenever I watched a movie, I always first pointed out the things I didn't like it before I started talking about the stuff I did like about it. You know, like, I, I think I started hating movies once I started, like, making my own, just because I knew, like, how it worked. But whenever I saw, like, a good movie, I could appreciate it, like, a lot more, just because, like, I know what it took to make that movie kind of like I could kind of relate to it but now I've kind of like realized that and I've changed it like I've changed my like my whole like I don't know like perspective my whole perspective yeah and uh so I like right now I'm like I personally don't like this movie I but I also don't get it I feel like this movie was made for someone and that someone is Zach uh, <laughs> dude, uh, Tarantino's get, your biggest fan. I'm man. about to get dunked on. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna. I'm, I, I'm actually not gonna go into specifics. I mean, like this movie's made for some idiot who uh, who he hates movies and only likes gun. But uh, anyways, uh, but I I think this movie was made for a person, and that person is not me, Ethan, or Ryan. I think, I think, but I feel like in general, movies like always at least when they're made semi well are made for an audience and if you don't like it it's fine that audience just like isn't for you and people like their own stuff you know so yeah anyways yeah i get, I get your point with the audience like a specific audience i feel like tarantino kind of does have his own audience at this point mm-hmm. that will reliably watch his films i may or may not be part of that audience as you have alluded to um i i get the whole outside of filmmaking what he's done and stuff is all weird and i understand that i do really like almost all of the movies that i've seen from him mm. and again pulp fiction is not the outlier in that case i i think it's a very good movie but i do see how it could be seen as playing to one specific audience yeah no but i also i also agree with you because to me i really like his movies and pulp fiction is the outlier Okay. For me personally, like I, I loved the movies that I've seen from him. Like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and Django are like amazing. I just didn't like this one. So it's like, yeah, like I'm not saying that his movies are bad because they're great. I think I think he's a great filmmaker. I just didn't understand Pulp Fiction, which is it. But yeah, I think that the movie is just. It's it was something different for the time when it came out. And it, it's kind of like, I'm, when I say I'm not a big fan of it, that's not completely true. Like, for a long time, I probably would have called it my favorite movie. I used, like, it's just kind of grown off of me over the years. I, I've just, like, I don't know, Tarantino in general, I've just kind of lost interest. The, the thing that, it's, it's similar with, uh, 
I, I don't know, Wes Anderson and people like that, where he kind of found a vein of style and he now like focuses his entire work on that style. Like every Tarantino movie hits the like grindhouse um, throwback style, but he doesn't really go out of that ever. That Pulp Fiction is like a good example of that, but it's nothing like it, it, it doesn't really add anything. That's where I liked, I think once upon a time in Hollywood is the best movie he's ever made because I, to, it, it felt different to me, and uh, it was just a really interesting movie. This movie is interesting, it, and I like it from like a, a filmmaking perspective. I think it's really like a triumph of indie filmmaking that he was able to make something like this and get like actual stars in it, despite having really nothing going for him at the point. I guess he had made Reservoir Dogs, but it's still kind of amazing what he was able to do. Um. But I don't know. I don't think it's aged well because of the like, the kind of carelessness he he has in his writing. I, that's something that is just kind of a trend with him is he doesn't really have any consideration for how his writing may affect people who he will just go after with like racial sexist characters, which I get that they're supposed to be flawed, but it's like every character he writes. So I think it becomes an issue. I feel like there's, like, also something to say about, like, the time that it came out. Because, like, we have to acknowledge... Like, I'm not saying that the stuff he does in this movie is, like, okay. But you have to admit, 30 years ago, this movie came out. It was a different time. Different things were funny. Different things were acceptable. And we are, what, 17, 16, 17, 18-year-old kids. We don't really know what it was like when this movie came out. We haven't experienced 90s LA. Like, we can look back on it, but we really don't know how it was like or what it was like so mm -hmm. it's kind of hard to formulate a good opinion you know yeah that's true awesome well uh before we get into reviews real quick i would like to shout out the description on letterboxd of this movie um i think it may be the funniest one <laughs> <laughs> uh a burger loving hitman <laughs> his philosophical partner a drug-addled gangster's mall and a washed-up boxer converge in this sprawling comedic crime caper. <laughs> <laughs> but that is fantastic. Oh, uh, oh my god, I didn't read that. I'm not even gonna lie. Um, a burger-loving hitman comes off of one line from this movie, I believe. Yeah. Uh, that that's just that. I mean, he was a burger-loving hitman. That is a tasty burger. So. Anyway, let's let's jump into the reviews. What do you got, Liam? On okay, to okay, to be honest, I don't have any positive reviews. How but let me explain why it's if you go on Letterboxd and look at the positive reviews, there are like no substance. That's true. In the po it's all just like burger good. <laughs> well, half of them are also in another language too. That's true. They're all in like <laughs> there's um, a lot of French and Russian reviews on pulp, mm -hmm. on pulp fiction. I don't get why people like this film so much. Which I think that's, like, I think that's kind of, like, my whole thing. Is that, like, I know it's made for this one specific audience, but, like, I don't get, like, all of the hype, you know? Because it's, it's, it's definitely overpraised depending on, it. like, it's, like, regardless of who you are. It's kind of, like, again, it's literally the movie. And that's not even, like... Like, and that's not even, like, me making fun of it. Like, it's it's genuinely, like, the movie that everybody watches. I do think that should be... They're kind of... The hype surrounding this, it's kind of created a reputation of if you don't like this movie, like, it's a problem, mm -hmm. is what I've seen from a lot of the positive reviews on Letterboxd, a lot of just people's opinions in general. It's just, like, this is a movie that so many people think are is so good that if you don't think it's good then you have poor judgment poor taste like that one review said but i i feel like that's a bogus reputation for any movie to have mm -hmm. because everyone has a different opinion on everything zach i think you should have gone with a different strategy i think you should have completely agreed with that and oh. then said we were all stupid for not liking it. Yeah, hold and on. And then won the argument. <coughs> Let me take that again. Liam, you're dumb and you should never watch a movie again because you didn't understand this one movie. I hate you. We're no longer friends. 
Ryan, you thought it was boring? Leave. Ethan, <laughs> <laughs> Ethan, honestly, you were kind of okay to it, so you're fine for now, but you're on thin ice, buddy. That's true. Anyway, I'm moving sorry. on. You know, when he calls you buddy, that's when you know you're, you're out. It's iconic. That's what it's, I think that's part of why it sticks around is just because it's, it is endlessly quotable. And I saw some reviews saying that, but it, I just don't know. It, it, I understand what he's trying to do with it, where it's got, it's like, it's got this poppy, like cool fifties kind of groove laid over the top of like gritty LA disgusting violence and I get that. It's just, to me, it's like, what is the what is the accomplishment? Like you can look at um, an, a like, a lot of these filmmakers are kind of similar in that regard. But you can look at someone like Martin Scorsese, and you can s- say that he has he definitely did accomplish like he basically did what Tarantino did like years before him. Tarantino is well regarded for his writing and his use of like. Uh, needle drops and Scorsese did that kind of first Tarantino gets a lot of credit for it even though I mean it wasn't really him and he's admitted to being inspired by all of these things which I I just don't think that's a great thing for because especially in like young filmmakers a lot of people will cite Tarantino as like their favorite and the issue with that is that Tarantino is a thief like, all of his things that he uses in his movies are, he's admitted to just taking them. So it's like, it's like watching a YouTube uh, summarization of, like, the history of cinema and then using that as the basis for your own filmmaking. Get him, Zach. I'm supposed to get him for that? No, I'm kidding. I mean, um, I do agree with that. Uh, he mentioned the needle drops and everything, and yeah, that's a big part of this film, and I get that he said that he's been inspired by these people. I do think that's a very good point that he is almost a thief with his own, because he's got like an iconic style akin to Wes Anderson, like we've said, but that iconic style, when you look at it, isn't really that special. So uh, this review is from Crystal, um, half a star. Uh, Having a film bro explain this to me as I watched it (laughs) was the worst experience of my life. This is... Very funny to me because I feel like this is like what the audience of the film is. I'm not accusing you, Zach, because you don't get girls, but uh, (laughs) my God, you're for the jugular today. So I'm not going to lie. I've caught myself doing this like once or twice with my girlfriend. Like I'll just be like explaining a movie and she like wants, I'm I'm not going to be like, I'm not going to be like, it's okay. It's okay. But like, I don't know. She likes when I do it. uh, that's what she tells. That's what she tells me. Yeah, she's but lying. I know she is. Um, <laughs> but I, uh, I mean, I've done, I've done it like once or twice. I, I feel like, have you guys caught yourself explaining a movie that you really liked after the fact, like before? No, I mean, I definitely get explaining a movie while it's happening, like accidentally, because if you like something so much, you want other people to like it, and you get a little scared that they might not, yeah. so you try to. To show them all the cool facts and stuff that would make them like it. But Personally, I start crying. When you start crying it. when yeah. people don't agree with you? I'm the kind of person who, like, Are you people hate watching that? movies with because I'm always, like, I, like, pause it. I'm like, dude, like, at this part in this movie, like, at, like, four seconds and 83 milliseconds, dude, there's this one part where the guy does, like, a backflip. And it's, like, the coolest thing ever. <laughs> and I, like, but obviously that doesn't happen in mm. Pulp Fiction. But I, yeah. I, I, I love pointing out every little detail. Uma Thurman pulls out a backflip in this movie. Oh my god, what's the timestamp? <laughs> I've got a half star review here from Emma Lindell. Awful. My life is worse after watching this movie. The fact that this movie was made makes me mad. The fact that people enjoy this movie makes me confused. Pulp Fiction, please go away. Terrible. So that's how I feel every day. I don't when Tenet exists. I don't think she liked the movie. You don't think so? I don't. Uh, something about that review tells me she did not like the movie. Yeah, I agree. I feel like uh, okay. I'm a little upset at that review because <laughs> <laughs> that gives that gives you nothing. It's just I hate this movie. This movie should go away. 
is is like an exact quote from that review. I mean, what it. I think it's I think it's ironic because that's like what all of the positive reviews also do. Yeah, yes. that's fair. Because there's no there is the whole uh, conversation surrounding Pulp Fiction in like our time is is just mindless. There's nothing ever added to the conversation. It is the same shtick repeated over and over again by different people. I think I honestly feel like we should take some argument about Pulp Fiction and put like eight noises over it and it would fit very well. I like Pulp Fiction. <laughs> I know <laughs> like Pulp Fiction. Yeah, I mean, at this point, it's just kind of gotten to like a bunch of people saying, hey, it's really good. And then a bunch and then like a few people being like, hey, I don't like it. And then those bunch of people just descending on you them like get hawks. It. You didn't get just, it. You didn't you get didn't it. You get don't it. understand you cinema. It. Ah. The same as the climate of modern politics. So when, facts. It really is. Sp- Guys, when we're leaving, Spicy takes. Zach's going to key <laughs> you didn't get it into all of our cars. Yeah, I'm going to slash <laughs> their tires. So uh, w- when I was looking through uh, the reviews, I saw a lot of uh, talks about the... Uh, the scene that's fair i mean you know this is going to be a very difficult scene to talk about without you know we're not allowed to really say what it is on this podcast. if you've seen the movie you know the scene it's with marcellus wallace at the pawn shop yeah. and it's it is rough to watch but i think it's kind of like i i don't know i i don't think it really i think it's necessary because he's the whole thing with the movie that he's trying to do is contrast the, the poppy fifties, like silly characters with that like gritty crime, so I think it it's it works with that. It's just really like awkward and which is probably also because you don't see that in movies a lot, which is a good thing. Hmm. But I I think it's it's definitely an outlier in what you usually see. It's, like, to say the least, it's uncomfortable. Right. Ryan, you recently watched it. Like, what did you, how, how did you feel when it came? Were you, were you I clapping? Mean, <laughs> clapping? Woo! Don't. The gimp! Yeah. Don't. Yeah. Oh, no. It actually was, I, like, I, I agree that it was kind of, like, uncomfortable. I, don't, I wouldn't say it was, like, turn, turn the TV off uncomfortable. You don't see a lot. Yeah. Like, it's a lot of it's implied. So I get, like, if you have, like, already had traumatic scarring. From something like similar to that or like bad experiences or anything in the realm of that how you could like let's turn the tv off bad but for someone who is like just a dude like hanging out watching a movie like i feel like it like it didn't reveal too much it was it was bad but it wasn't like i'm gonna go vomit bad you know you know what i'm saying i think it's effective too because up until then like the whole the other thing with the movie that he, he was that they always talk about he was trying to do is take these like traditional like pulp stories and kind of turn them on their head like the the boxer and the gangster but then when they when they go in the pawn shop it literally leaves you with no idea of what's going to happen like when that happens because up until then it's kind of like a classic like mafia story like the gangster doesn't listen to the boss and and all that but it really is like such a nightmare scenario that you don't know what will happen. Like it completely turns the whole story on its head. So I think it is effective in that way. It's just kind of hard to watch. Ryan, what you got? I have some reviews. Um, Woo, Ryan reviews. Okay, so this one. Let's go. This one is from a person named Brandy, and she said, "I wonder what this would have been like if Quentin Tarantino hadn't incorporated as many guns and as much use of the N slur." Uh, he, uh, they think there were some very well written connections and images, but uh, they have a feeling that this was not a self aware satirical take on manhood, and it was crazy that it ended with them storing their guns by the, uh, you know, uh, and they ca- and they said they can't name a single woman character that didn't feel like an accessory or a joke, and I kind of agree with that to some extent. The I feel like every like woman in this movie does kind of feel like very written by a man if that makes any sense at all which i guess it is but like i don't know i it just feels kind of like to me a little uncomfortable sometimes with Mm -hmm. how women are depicted because they really they do kind of feel like 
they're just there for the men in the story. Yeah. And I like the Mia Wallace character, but literally the title of her story is Vincent Vega and Marcellus Wallace's wife. That's the like title of it. It's not and Mia Wallace. Uh, which he likes Tarantino will ride the excuse of I'm paying homage to 70s grindhouse films to his grave. But it, it gets to a point where it's just he's just an insensitive writer. And I, I think he, he is, yeah. He also makes them kind of the problem in both of their own stories, if you think about it. Because she does... What's she, the other one? Uh, the, um, Marcellus Wallace's wife, and then, um, what's her name? The uh, Butch's wife. That's true. Because she forgets the watch, which yeah. makes everything that happened have to happen. Yeah. And, like, it made her just, like, look like she was like, oh, she's such a forgetful lass that she made all these problems happen, which I feel like is kind of... Well, also, she has literally no character. Yeah, I think she that's... She just shows hey, please, up. She's and, French, bro, please. She's a laughably bad Can character. Can I have pancakes? <laughs> I just want to lay in this room all day. I don't understand what you do. It's bad. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that's that's a good point. I think kind of separate, but also mentioned in that review, is like the amount of violence and guns and blood and stuff. And that's definitely a Tarantino staple at this point. But... I don't know. Do we think that detracts from the movie at all? No. I think it it's it it's what you need in the movie that's very like dialogue driven. You need that kind of punch every like half hour or so to keep you going. Otherwise, I think it would get redundant. It it's just enough to get you like to really pull you back in whenever it kind of slows down like especially in the Golden Watch. There are like there's that long stretch where they where it's just Butch and uh, the French woman in the hotel, and it's just bland conversation about nothing. And then, but they do pull you back when it gets to the the scene. Yeah, the scene. And I have another review that I kind of agree with. Um, this one was a good, like a five star review. The other one was a like a one star review. Uh, this one says uh, this is from Mr. Film Buff, and he said the wolf really kicks this movie into gear. And I kind of agree with that. He's uh, a fun character. The wolf is probably my favorite character in this entire movie. I think he's funny. I think he's probably the best written character. I, I just like him in general. I think it's funny. Uh, I think his lines are funny. 30 minutes away? I'll be there in 10. There, <laughs> that story is great. The whole... I love the setup of it. Yeah, it's hilarious. Do we want to talk about the structure? That's another thing that a lot of people talk about with this movie. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's one that non-linear i don't that's one of the things that i don't really get why it needed to be like that i mean just the one part that really was a little annoying to me was the fact that butch's story had uh vincent you know die and yeah. that was and then we had a right the wolf story comes yeah. after that one right i think the whole idea behind it is to throw you off with things like Vincent dying because you, you're it, it really catches you off guard it's like halfway through the movie and John Travolta dies the protagonist which I it's effective but it's I, I think it's I agree where I don't see it like I don't think it really added much to it all right well uh that's about it for our talks on Pulp Fiction very polarizing movie even within this little group here um so we would love to hear your thoughts about it in the uh, poll that we're going to put on this episode. Do you think it's good? Do you think it's bad? Um, yeah, but thanks for listening. And that's episode one, kind of, of Review Review. Yeah. Uh, on Spotify, this will be marked as episode one. And if I use it, but we'll really put down as episode two. Two. Or we can do like 1.1 1. 1 or something. I don't know. Um, 1.5. I don't know. Uh, and if you're listening on Spotify, it feel free and it's a it's a leave something in the Q and A below, or uh, or in the poll, or just like say anything, you know. Um, if you're on YouTube, uh, please dislike and insult us. <laughs> uh, we really like it when you do that. Actually, we're posting under FCPS schools, so the comments are turned off, so we, they can't oh. insult us. But ha 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 You can text us after. Yeah, you can text go us. to the email that the account is under <laughs> and write horrible things. <laughs> All right, anyways, um, yeah. That's a wrap. That's, That's a wrap.